Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. I just got back from a trip to Banff in Canada, and uh, I thought I would do a quick video showing uh, what my baggage looked like. So, uh, you know, so I can take a look at it in the future and see what I packed, and also if you're curious, so you can see what I packed. So I do a lot of photography when I go on trips. Uh, this was primarily a skiing trip with my family, um, but I did some photography uh, as sort of a, a secondary goal. And a lot of my trips are like that. Like my, uh, my, my primary goal will be business, and then my secondary goal will be photography. So uh, I have a special kit that I use for that, and I, I thought I would, I would share it here. So uh, first on the left here, this is a Pelican 1620 case. And uh, this contains my Nikon 400 millimeter 2.8 lens and uh, my carbon fiber Gitzo monopod. That was the only bag that I checked on this trip. And you can see that I use, I actually use uh, regular locks instead of TSA locks. Um, and it made the trip okay. The more interesting thing I think are these other two bags. So this is a Osprey uh, Farpoint 40 backpack and uh, that's designed as a carry-on bag and so the point of having a backpack like this is you can carry it on the plane you can put it in the overhead bin and uh, it's also got like an internal frame in the front here so that you can carry a bit more weight so let's uh and, and by the way I'm filming this with an iPhone because my my camera equipment is still in that bag so when I go on most trips, uh, just because of my photography style, I find that uh, the, the only thing that I really need is a Nikon camera and a 24 millimeter lens and an 85 millimeter lens. So if you, you know, if you prefer zooms or something like that, then, then you'll obviously have a different kit. But I thought I would show how this works for me. So uh, when you open up the bag here, I've got a Ziploc, and uh, this contains things like uh, deodorant, contact lenses, uh, contact lens solution, toothpaste, um, you know, basically any toiletries. I think I took my toothbrush out of here last night, but I would normally put my toothbrush in there. And then in a separate Ziploc, inside that Ziploc, I have my remote trigger for my camera, my charger for my camera batteries, Okay, so this is that secondary bag, and so I've got a uh, Nikon D850 battery there. Um, I think I've got two of them. So one there, one there. I've got a an Apple um, iPad charger. I use that for my uh, remote camera battery. Um, I've got a charger for the uh, Nikon batteries. I've got a spare uh, XQD card, and... Uh, I've got some, some lithium ion batteries. These are for like a headlamp. Um, I'll show that more later. But so the reason why I put all of this in, in these two Ziplocs is so that I can just pull the whole unit out and put it on the, you know, in the bin for security. Because you gotta be able to get through security quickly. And if you've ever traveled with camera equipment, uh, photography equipment, you know that, uh, you know, you end up pulling out like most of your bag. So let's uh, let's move on here. So this is, my Nikon D850. And I use these neoprene um, lens sleeves to cover my lenses. And I'll, uh, I'll have a link to those down below the video in the description. And so uh, it, it just has the, the 85 millimeter 1.4 G mounted. Um, if you really wanna save some weight, I highly recommend going with either a 50 millimeter or a, an 85 millimeter 1.8. Uh, but I've got the, the 1.4 on here because I kinda like it. So. Uh, there's my camera. And then in my other neoprene sleeve here, I've got my 24 millimeter PCE. There's my 24 millimeter PCE. And so this is my main like landscape and urban photography lens. Uh, this is what I primarily use for that because it, it's got the shift and the, and the tilt. I mostly don't use the tilt, but I use the shift quite a bit to get panoramas and things like that. Uh, so this is a manual lens, uh, which makes it kind of a pain in the balls sometimes, but, uh, you know, I, I still like it. I took, um, I took these two pictures with this 24, uh, the top, top right is Vancouver, Canada, and, uh, the bottom 
is Seattle. So I enjoy that lens a lot. Um, let's see. So continuing on through the through the pack again. This is primarily a ski trip for me, a vac ski vacation. So I've got uh, these um, heat gloves. These are photography gloves. Cool thing about these gloves is you can put them on and you can have your your fingers showing through. Very good for cold weather. I love these. Um, and I've also got liners for those. These are the, the liners packed away over here on the side. And so that these are like waterproof nylon liners. Uh, the gloves are made out of leather. And uh, that's just for like extreme situations. I, I ended up not really using these at all. The, the leather ones were fine. It was unseasonably warm in Banff when I went. I went in March 2019, uh, just a couple of days ago. And uh, it... You know, the, the coldest it got was zero degrees Celsius, so like 32 Fahrenheit. But most of the time it was up around uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which, sorry, I don't know the, the Celsius conversion for that right off the top of my head, but uh, probably like 14 or 16 degrees or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so it was pretty warm. And I, I ended up, I did use the gloves, but I didn't use the, the liners too much. Or not the liners, the uh, the outer shells too much. So taking the gloves away... I've got a pair of swim shorts here, and uh, I don't use any compression. I didn't use any compression for the trip back for the swim shorts, so set those aside. Uh, this is my uh, Arcturix Beta AR jacket, and I love this. Uh, it's got a lot of venting, and so, like I said, it was a very hot day uh, most of the days that I was there skiing, and so you're doing a lot of you know heat output because you're skiing. And it was hot anyway, so uh, this was a great jacket for that because it's got a lot of venting and it's you know fairly lightweight. Kept me dry, even though the slow snow is nice and slushy. And these are my Arcturix Beta AR pants, uh, and so these are you know the equivalent of the jacket. They're quite nice. My only real complaint about these pants is that they've only got one pocket. <laughs> I wish they had two. They're quite nice. Um, and then this is my Gitzo travel tripod. Uh, this is a, let's see if I remember which series it is. Let's see here. So the model number is GT2545T. Uh, and I use this tripod. The, the thing that I love about this tripod is that it fits into this backpack, uh, and you know, as a carry on item, it's also quite lightweight because it's carbon fiber. It's got a ball head on the end, which I actually find works quite well for all the photography that I do. And again, I use that tripod to take those two pictures up there. So it's quite a nice piece of kit. And I will hopefully show some pictures of uh, band that I took with that tripod as well. Uh, and then in the backpack here, this is my, um, my, my wool insulation. So these are things like my Wolex Glacier shirt. So it's like a like a 400 weight um, merino wool shirt, and uh, I've also got a a 400 weight merino wool uh, set of bottoms, and I found in those temperatures that that was all I wore under my under my outer shell in the afternoons. Sometimes I even took off the jacket, but I would leave the pants on, and so I you know all of that is in there. Uh, I've also got a spare pair of socks, and I think I've got a spare pair of pants which you know, just for like regular day pants instead of uh, ski pants. And I, I should have just left those at home because honestly, I didn't use them at all. <laughs> I just wore the ski pants the entire time. So uh, this is a waterproof compression sack that I bought from REI, Sea to Summit. Uh, quite nice, event, waterproof. Really enjoy that. All right, let's see. And then, so that's that's the main compartment in the bag. I don't keep anything in this mesh pocket here. Let's see the other compartment. Okay, so in the other compartment, I've got my merino wool uh, glove liners for the heat uh, glove system. And these were excellent. I love these. They're, they're fairly warm. They, they stay fairly warm, even when they're quite damp, because uh, I, would, I would often just wear these instead of wearing the outer shell when it was warmer. And uh, they're, they're pretty great. Uh, I did, they, they are a little fragile. I did get a hole in them. Where is it? Yeah, right there. I think I, I picked up a ski or something and I cut the, the glove. My partner says she can sew it up for me though, so that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I love these things. They've got they've got uh, on the on the 
two fingers, the index finger and the, and the middle finger, they've got these electrostatic pads and also on the thumb here. And so you can use uh, touch screen devices. So the, you know, the back of the D850 camera, you can also use, uh, you know, gestures on a MacBook Pro or something like that. I mean, these things are really great. Credit card scanners, things like that. Uh, and then this is, this is something that we bought when we went to Seattle. Uh, because we were riding, riding public transportation most of the time. This is a Goal Zero Sherpa 40, and uh, this thing is fantastic. It's big, it's a little heavy, but uh, what you find when you're doing public transportation all the time is that you really need a GPS like almost all the time to calculate your routes, figure out which bus you're going to ride, which train, you know, whatever. And so, uh, you know, if all you have is a phone, probably you're going to run out of juice pretty quickly doing that. But this thing can recharge two cell phones all day long. So, um, and, and, and by cell phones, I mean like iPhone 7 and 8, I believe, is what my partner and I carry. Uh, so in Seattle and Vancouver, uh, we, we carried this around and, you know, we never ran out of juice. It was, it was great. So great piece of kit. Highly recommend it. Uh, no problem taking it on a plane or anything. And I just, I keep this in this, in this little pouch right here. And then when I'm on the bus or something, I'll just crack open the zipper and I'll, I'll use that. Okay, uh, let's see. What else do I carry around in here? Sometimes I carry around a, uh, like a filter, a, um, uh, what do they call them? Crap, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head, but one of those filters that you use for uh, cutting through fog and, you know, making the clouds pop and, and things like that. Uh, I sometimes carry one of those in here. I don't have it in here right now. I think I took it out. And then in this top pocket here, you've got these water bottle pockets. They're, they're okay, but you've got to use these. Like I, if I carry a Nalgene in here, I like to put the strap through the loop of the Nalgene because uh, I find that the water bottles tend to pop out of these things. I lost one once that way. Um, and then in this top pocket here, I carry a lens cleaning cloth and the Osprey uh, waterproof um, cover for this bag, which is which is useful. I, I like it. I've got some TSA locks just kind of as a deterrent to keep people out of the bag. These go on the zippers uh, when when I'm on a train or a bus or something. And then um, this is one of these. I can't remember the name of this thing, but uh, it goes on like the the strap of your backpack, and it allows you to clip your camera onto the strap of your backpack using the tripod mount of your camera. Um, and I I like this thing. I, I use it sometimes, but it's a bit uncomfortable. Like the back, the metal back kind of digs into your shoulder sometimes. So I like to keep it in there just in case I really need to clip and unclip and have my hands free. Like if I'm going on a hike or something, but I ended up not using this at all in band. So and that's pretty much it for that. Uh, great pack. It's got... Let's see. It's got these uh, chest straps and stuff. It's also got the hip belts. Nowhere near as comfortable as a true, like, hiking or backpacking pack. But again, it does have that internal frame, which allows you to carry quite a bit more weight. And uh, I liked it. I skied with it on all the time. Uh, and it was quite comfortable for that. So, all right, so moving moving on to the next bag. So the next thing that I carried is this uh, this duffel bag. And so the reason why I do this is because you can put that in the overhead and you can put this under the seat. So this is a little big for, for a personal item on a plane. Uh, it's a 21 inch duffel, but what I do is I just don't pack it up all the way. I, you know, I, I leave a lot of room in there because you end up having to squeeze this thing into, you know, really small spaces. Um, even, even on, you know, you, you can't trust like the under seat area of a plane to be consistent. Like, you know, I was on four planes to Banff and most of the time it's like 18 by 14 by eight, I think in inches. Uh, but one of the planes had like this piece under the, under the seat. I don't know what it was for. It was in the middle seat and it restricted it quite a bit. So, uh, but you know, it, it still fit. So, you know, you just, you just have to make sure that you really make an effort not to pack it up all the way. If you're one of those people that, uh, you know, if you have space, you're gonna, you're gonna fill it up all the way and you're gonna make it overflowing, then I strongly recommend that instead of a 21 inch duffel, you get an 18 or even something smaller. 
So, uh, and, and the reason why you do this, the reason why you carry a backpack and a, and a duffel is because at least in 2019, usually they will not check them. Uh, often what's happening is people are uh, gate checking their bags now. And you, of course, don't want, you know, photography equipment to get gate checked because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get destroyed in the cargo hold, right? I mean, everybody knows that. You don't, you don't gate check uh, photography equipment. So if you bring, you know, these two items, you can usually carry some pretty sensitive stuff. And uh, because it doesn't have any wheels on it, they're usually not going to gate check it. If, like, if they did for some reason gate check that bag, I could move all of my sensitive equipment into the personal item and put it under the seat. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so inside this duffel, I carry, this is a uh, Arcturix, um, I think it's a Cerium LT. This is a down jacket, very, very warm. Did not use that at all in Banff, it was way too hot. But I, I you know, it gets down to like negative 20 there or something. So I, uh, I packed for much colder weather than I needed. This is my ski helmet. Uh, in this bag, I also have an electronics bag, and so this was um, my lavalier mic. I ended up not using that. Didn't make any any crazy videos while I was out there, and also a NIMH battery charger. Uh, these are my Arcturix. Uh, I actually don't remember the model of these. These are like um, synthetic insulation pants. And so I could have used these as either a, uh, a mid-layer, if it was very cold, or an outer layer, uh, just for like when I'm sitting around. Ended up not using these at all. Wasn't anywhere near cold enough for that, but I carried it anyway, just in case. Uh, this is a sunglasses case. Um, I'm used to just wearing my sunglasses, but I find that uh, when I go on trips, I need a case because otherwise my sunglasses get all scratched up because I often need to put them in a, into a bag. And then uh, my goggles. I've got some Smith IOMAG goggles. These are excellent. Apparently I have, I'm like, I'm like European, <laughs> but uh, like genetically mostly, I think, European and Italian. But uh, for some reason I have an Asian fit face. So these, these fit my face. Go figure. And then I've got, for the helmet, uh, this is a, uh, what's the model number on this? This is a Phoenix... I think it's like a um, 60, I don't remember the model number, sorry. Anyway, this is an extremely bright, uh, it's like something like 1,600 lumens, extremely bright headlamp, and I've got these little um, clips to put it on the helmet so that it stays on the helmet. Uh, anyway, I, I ended up not using that because they had closed down night skiing. Oh, there's my circular polarizer. That's what they're called. Yeah, that's the thing that cuts through um, fog. Anyway, usually carry a circular polarizer somewhere. Uh, and then this is my radio, two-way radio. Oh, it's still on. I need to turn that off. Anyway, uh, this is a BCA Link 2.0. And uh, this is why I skied with my backpack most of the time. What you do is you put the radio in the backpack and then you clip this to the strap on the backpack. And then you can just, you can talk to people pretty easily. Uh, and so my partner and I, we've got like four kids between the two of us. Uh, and so she would go down first and I would go down last because I'm slower and uh, we could communicate if somebody fell or something like that, or if you know we wanted to take a different run. So this was great. I really, I really enjoyed having two of these. Probably need some more, but they're quite expensive. So a uh, little two-way radio, and I think that's it. You know, little cables and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's pretty much my kit. Uh, it, it seems like a lot when you put it out on the table like this, but uh, it all fits into a carry-on, a personal item, and one check bag for the huge 400 millimeter lens. So. Um, anyway, I'll have links to most of these products down below the video in the description if you're curious and, you know, maybe you want to pick one up for yourself. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching and please subscribe.